I'd like to say good morning and welcome to today's edition of Sunday Church. We're greatly encouraged by all of your presence this morning. Hope we trust and pray that this past week was a good week for you as we start this new week. Amen. We know that God is with us and he is ever taking care of us and he loves us and he's concerned about the things that are going on in our lives. So we greet you this morning in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is our God and through him we do badly. This is the day. That the Lord has made, I do rejoice, and I am glad in it, and you should too. And as I say, you should tell yourself it's getting better every day, amen? Because you have to believe that for yourself, and you have to know that for yourself, and say that to yourself each and every day. To our members who've joined us on the parking lot, because we're grateful to God and greatly encouraged by your presence. To our members who've joined us via conference call and our video call, we thank God for you. To our family, friends, supporters, and members who've joined us, via social media. We thank God for you and welcome you to today's edition of Sunday Church. There is a word from the Lord that will bless you and encourage you and help you on today. Amen. For every problem there is an answer and we can find that answer from and in the word of God. So we'll pray today, day eight, as we continue to pray the 30 days of prayer, praise, and healing, victory over the noise and pestilence. Encourage you to repeat these prayers after me. Prayer is the fight. Prayer is not preparation for the fight. Prayer is the battle. Prayer is not preparation for the battle. We always start with prayer because Jesus Christ himself said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So there should be some praying going on in God's house. And we pray collectively as a body so that we are fighting the devil as one on every Sunday and Wednesday and other time that we may come together. Amen. Believing that God strikes a mighty blow into the camp of the enemy every time that we pray together in unity and harmony. So I ask you to please, please repeat these prayers after me. They say, Holy Spirit, take over the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any power of darkness against the glory of God in the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church be destroyed by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every seed and strength of sin in our lives die now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every garment of infirmity catch fire and burn to ashes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I drink the blood of Jesus Christ and pass out from my body, system, every demon of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I inhale the fire of God and pass out every deposit of infirmity from my body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, dash the power of stubborn pursuers into pieces like a potter's vessel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, dash the power of stubborn pursuers in pieces, pieces, like a potter's vessel, potter's vessel, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, arise, oh God, arise. With, all your of war with all your weapons of war and fight, fight. my battles for me, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God. Be, my be my glory and the lift of my head, of my head. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, great wind from the wilderness, arise and locate the houses of powers still in the resources of our country in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Effectual fervent prayer stones, locate the forehead of the Goliath of this country and kill him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Divine raging storms. Locate any hiding place. Assigned to bear the destiny of this country. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every decree of untimely death hovering over my life. Catch fire and die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every evil link between me and the spirit of death and untimely death be cut off 
by the blood of our Lord Jesus. By the blood of our Lord Jesus. Thank you. Let's pray now. Prayers for our nation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Prayers for our nation from May 26th, 2021. Have these prayers. May 26, 2021, prayers for our nation. If you don't have them, you may repeat them after me. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we confess all the sins and the iniquities of the land, of our ancestors, of our leaders, and of our people. We repent of the violence. We repent of rejection of God. We repent of corruption. We repent of idolatry. We repent of robbery. We repent of unjustified suspicion. We repent of injustice. We repent of bitterness. We repent of bloody riots. We repent of organized massacre. We repent of the blue wall of police evil loyalty. We repent of rebellion. We repent of conspiracy. We repent of shedding of innocent blood. We repent of systemic racism. We repent of racial conflicts. We repent of child kidnapping and murder. We repent of occultism. We repent of witchcraft. We repent of mismanagement. We repent of negligence. We plead for mercy and forgiveness. Have mercy upon us, Heavenly Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, remember our land and redeem it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Prince of Peace reign in every department of this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, Give us leaders who will see their roles as a calling from God, not an opportunity to amass wealth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the power of salvation come upon these United States of America. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let this nation experience awesome presence of God in his fullness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that every agent of the devil in the United States of America be disgraced in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ all wasters of American resources be scattered in confusion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we dismantle the stronghold of poverty in this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, install your agenda for this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every plot to disrupt our voting system be exposed, be disgraced, be brought to nothing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every plan to keep Americans and America in perpetual systemic racism scatter under desolation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's pray these prayers for the family. Every ancestral vulture assigned to feed on the destiny of my family be scattered into destruction in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, heavens, change the story of my family to glory in the name of the Lord 
Lord Jesus Christ. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries of my family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You power that trouble the Egyptians, trouble the enemies of my family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, gates of brass and bars of iron, working against my family, be broken and destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the days of the enemies of my family be cut off and let a friend take that place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Father. You're so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, purify my lips with your holy fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take seven prayers from the prayers of Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. They will be the first seven. Would you pray them with me? Hallelujah. Revive your work, O God, in our midst, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything in our lives is irritating God, be uprooted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill our members and lead us with your fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we thank you for the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every rage of darkness against the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church be destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray today that love, unity, and family love will not cease in our midst. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that as a church Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray as individuals. None of our members will miss God's kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you now, beloved, for joining us this morning in prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Our Lord Jesus taught us that. That men are always to pray and not to faint. Because if you pray, you won't faint. But if you faint, you cannot pray. Let's prepare now for praise worship. As Pastor Lindsay comes now. We exalt you, we bless your holy and your righteous name, but there's none like you, nobody like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor. You can bless his name right there where you are. You're the light of Judah. The light of Judah, rain over every day. You're the light of Judah. You are the great I am. You're the light of Judah. Rule over all the land, and you're holy, mighty. 
blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. There is none like you. We glorify you this morning. We glorify you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you and bless your name today, God. How we thank you, how we love you, Lord.
Amen. Like I say, good morning. Thank you so much, Pastor Lindsay. Amen. For leading us into the presence of God. And then thank you, Pastor. Amen. For leading us in prayer this morning. Amen. Praise. Thank God. Thank Amen. For his presence and his power here with us. Hallelujah. And for us and that he is ever among us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for this. He has made us and not we ourselves. Amen. Do it right before me. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. neighbor. It's going to be all right. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor. neighbor. It's going to be all right. Now, you may be sitting by yourself, and that's okay. Take yourself on your device and mirror it and look at yourself and say, self, self. in case you forgot. Here's a reminder. It's going to be all right. Amen. And say this part too. It's getting better. It's getting better. Every day. Every amen. Day. We thank God, amen, for this second Sunday of August. Amen. This is a great month. Amen. This is Daddy's birthday month. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Month. Yeah. Uh, August, amen. So we thank God, amen, for that. And I know many parents are going to be excited, amen, because school <laughs> is starting. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we cover yeah. our children and our uh, teachers and paraprofessionals, us and sports Amen. staff, Amen. we believe in prayer. Amen. Amen. That no hurt, harm, or danger comes near them and they are safe from this plague and this pestilence Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you don't have any children, you don't have any grandchildren, you see young people, you see children, pray for them. That's it. Amen. I see young boys and teenagers or whatever, men walk on the street, I pray for them. Amen. Amen. Why, Pastor? Because there's so much going on. Right. Amen. To our young people. Amen. I was thinking about it, you know, yesterday looking in the mirror. I said, man, I'm blessed. Because yeah, I got homeboy that didn't live to see gray hair on the head. Oh, my God. Amen. That's real. That's Amen. Real, I got homeboys right. that got children that live longer than they did and they died as boys. My Lord. Oh, my Amen. God. It's just a real story. Amen. So life is precious. Amen. We know that and we honor that and we thank God for long life. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because I like to say longevity is a beautiful thing. Amen. Because if God blesses you and prospers you to be able to stay on this planet, especially in these days and time, in this land called the United States of America, oh, Lord. you're blessed. Amen. Right. Amen. As you will, please turn in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 4. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 4. Amen. Pastor, I'd like to sing at the end uh, more than anything, Pastor, please. At the end. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Grace, Heavenly Father, God in heaven, thank you, O God, for your grace, your peace, your love, your joy, your understanding, yes, your wisdom, Lord. your knowledge, your forgiving power, your grace, God, your mercy that you extended to all of us thank who you, are yet still alive. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this opportunity to share with you, your people. Now, God, I ask you to take out of myself and be less of me and more of you, less of me and more of you. Less of me as all of you and none of me, not unto my name. But unto your name, O oh God, be all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, yes. and all the power. Heavenly Father, I thank you for boldness and accurate articulation of speech. I thank you for no sinners of my own and you, and other what the Spirit of God would dictate. I thank you, God, this morning for bringing back to my remembrance those things you taught me, I learned from me and with you, what you've shown me, what you told me. Told me and showed me through observation and experience as well. Oh God. Answer our question on this morning, oh Heavenly <laughs> Father. Take our despair and bring us joy. Take our disarray and bring us peace. Oh Lord. Take our anxiety and bring Pray. us the calm that you have, oh Heavenly Father God. Pray. God be with us in this moment. We come against every hindering force right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We put stumbling blocks in Satan's way right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your word goes forth unhindered, unchecked. By any force, the history is of your people and comes to the end to where which you send it. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. As you build us up, we need to be built up. Tear us down, we need to be built back up. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for every person, God, to get saved, set free, spirit for here delivered at the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and the church worldwide globally. In Jesus Christ's name, I agree with that Christ. prayer and said, Amen. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 4, reading to you from the King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, But now says the Lord that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, yes, Lord. you will not be burned. Thank you, Lord. Neither will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, yes. the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and ah. Seba for you. Yes, Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honorable, and I have loved you. Therefore, will I give men for you and people for your life. This morning, I want to talk about God's substitutes and diversions. Oh, oh, God's you. substitutes and diversions. Say so that back to me where you are. God's substitutes, God's substitutes. and Diversions. The objective this morning is to let you know that God will deliver you. He will bring you out. He'll do it. And he already knows what he is going to do. And every time I say that, it blesses me. God already knows what he is going to do. He doesn't have to have a meeting with his joint chiefs of staff. He doesn't have to sit up and draw up a plan, write up a plan. He doesn't have to brainstorm. He doesn't have to use a thinking map or whatever you want to call it. Sit down with a piece of paper. He already knows, he already knows. what he's going to do to get you out this morning. Hallelujah. And don't allow Satan to make you think yeah. that God cannot deliver you. All right. All right. Uh, when we get in the bind, when we get in the hole, when we get in the jam, when we get backed up, into a corner, that's not the end of the story. When we fall into disarray, when we fall into a trap, yeah. it's still not the end of the story because God will save us. The scripture is very interesting. In verse 1, it says, But I created you, O Jacob. Now, the Bible lets us know specifically in the Old Testament that God never forgets who nation Israel was and who they are. All right. Because from time to time, you hear him say, it's called him old Jacob. Uh -huh. And he said, I created you, old Jacob. In other words, I bought you from nothing to be something else. See, that Jacob, that is the rascal, that is the supplanter, the trickster, the, the, the fraud, the, the con artist. Yeah. <laughs> but the Bible says that God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. Now, that, it's difficult for a lot of people to understand that God will love a crook. Is that God call it for what it is? All right. But you have to understand that God loves who He loves. Yeah. And, and it's just that simple. You don't have to go any deeper in front of that because I mean sometimes we fall in love and we don't know why we love the people that oh, we love or why we like the people that we like. Now we find out as we get older. Yeah. In our lives, we see that we tend to like people that look like or favor somebody that we like from our past, or they yeah. have a kindred yeah. spirit that's like to ours, or, or, yeah. or they remind us of a, some childhood friend or some childhood loved one, or they have some features or something of someone that we didn't even notice. But God say, I created you, old Jacob, and then he say, I formed you. Now that word created, of course, to make something from nothing. Right. But he says, I formed you, yeah. Oh, Israel. That word Israel, it means prince. It, right. it, 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 it's, it's a great word because Jacob gets that name after wrestling with an angel. Uh -huh. And he said, the angel said, look, the day break, I got to get out of here. I got to go back where I come from, 2021 version. Yeah. And, and Joseph, Jacob, excuse me, said, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. He said, well, what's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, from his voice, your name will be Israel because you have prevailed, prevailed with both God and man. But God formed Israel. He made Israel. And the Bible said that God didn't pick Israel because they were the greatest and they were the mightiest. God said that y'all were the smallest. But God himself saw, it, saw to it that they multiplied and became a great and mighty nation. He said, for I have redeemed you. Anytime you see that word redeemed, it's talking about that God paid the price. Yeah. <laughs> so you ought to get glad about it. Anytime you hear that, I just love that song as a boy. That song, Redeem My Soul, all right. has been redeemed, which means yeah. I'm already paid for. What I've gone through is already paid for. God yeah. has already sent his son, Jesus the Christ, in my place. Because yeah. I owe the debt. And I cannot play. Jesus Christ was the ultimate 
debt consolidated, if you will. All right now. He compounded all our sins upon himself because the Bible says he bore the sins of the world. He died for all of us, the great and the small, the rich and the poor, the, the dying and the living. He died yes. for all. And then he made sure he didn't leave nobody. The Bible said he went down to hell and preached down there too. Yes, sir. In other words, if you didn't hear the gospel, didn't know that Jesus was coming before he came into the earth, he gave them a chance to get it right too. And I want to encourage you this morning. Amen. Get it right with God this morning for yourself because no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will appear. In other words, he, the Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. You, don't know. Yeah. you know about a thief in the night? A thief in the night, he expects the darkness to be his cloak. Yeah. And he expects you to be unaware and vulnerable. So, so get it right. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, oh God, you need to accept him into your heart as Lord and Savior. Why do I need a Savior? You ain't never been in trouble before? All right. You've never had a situation that you didn't know how to get yourself out of. Jesus Christ is the one that helps us with those types and those kind of situations. The Bible yes, says with his sir. arm, with an outstretched arm, he will deliver us. He said, I have called you by my name. In other words, I gave you my name. That wasn't your name, but I gave you my name. And I call you by calling myself my God for the word. Uh -huh. yes, sir. They say, you're my name. Children, like your daddy or your mama talking about, well, you know, those are such and such as children. You know, like parents, you know, when the children are doing good, one parent is claiming, but when they're doing what they're not supposed to do, the other parent will claim. Either way it go, God claims his yeah. children. He said that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Yes, sir. Because there will be some water type situations in your life where you may get knee deep in the water. You may get chest deep in the water. You may get neck deep in the water. But God said, when you're going to, through those signs of things, those types of situations, those dark days, he said, I will be right there with you. Thank you, Lord. And that means that you're not going through it by yourself. And I know that it feels like that you're going through it by yourself. I know it may you may sense that you're by yourself, but that's not the truth. No, it's not. The truth of God's word is saying he will never leave us, never. nor Forsake us. What does that mean? He will constantly be with us. Now, to be sure, our sin will put a wall up between us and God, but God still has a hedge around us right. in the meantime All right. All right. until we can get back to where we need to be with Him. He said, When you walk through the rivers, they will oh, not Lord. overflow you. Yes, sir. Because sometimes you have to go from point A to point B, and there is no bridge in between A and B. And the only way to get through it, my God, yes, sir. is through the river. Yes, sir. They say when you go through the river, they say it will not overflow. You're not going to be carried away, my God, from Zion. That, that, that the river is not stronger than God. And somebody needs to hear that this morning. That the river that you're in this morning is not stronger than our God. You have to remember who God is over in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. He's saying the Spirit of God moved, yeah. hovered over the face of the waters. God and water are very familiar with each other. Oh, yeah. And water does not bother God. Your situation does not matter to God. I'm saying like Pastor said, your situation is just right <laughs> for God. Yes, sir. Yes. So we're talking about God's substitutes and his diversions. We see here and that third verse says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Sometimes you got to remind God, God, you are my Savior. Yes, yeah. sir. You are my King. You are my Lord. And you are my Redeemer. You are my strength. You are the Holy One of Israel. You are the God who saves from the guttermost up to the uttermost. There is nothing that you cannot do. Yes, sir. He said, I gave Egypt for your ransom. So yes, that, that, that gives us a picture about what was going on. When Israel left that part of Africa, going to this northeast part of Africa, and that Egypt was paying a price yeah. <laughs> that Israel could not pay. Yes, Say it again. <laughs> Egypt. See, this will help somebody. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. What does that do, Pastor? It open up your spirit so you can understand and receive the revelation from God this morning for your situation. Egypt. Paid the price for Israel. Yes, sir. Israel didn't have nothing. <laughs> they had goats. Yeah. They had sheep. 
They had cows, lambs, all these, these types of kinds. Of they didn't have clothes. But the Bible said that God told Moses, tell the people to go borrow from the Egyptians. Now, never in all of history have I seen it occur where slaves borrowed from masters. All right. And the masters were okay with it. But the Bible say that the Egyptians gave them so much that it appeared as if they had robbed the Egyptians. Yeah, God gave Egypt, made Egypt pay the price for Israel. All right. That's why Pastor said, you don't ever know why you're blessed like you're blessed. Right. <laughs> God maybe made, made somebody pay you for a price that you couldn't pay for yourself. Thank Help you me, Lord. Lord. You. That's what I'm you, you'll never know how God's hand is moving of why God's hand is moving in your life. He said, I'm your Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Yes. It, doesn't, it doesn't seem as a surprise to me that the motherland, the continent of Africa is still nourishing the world because that's the place that started off nourishing the world. Yes, sir. And without her, they are none. And without her, there shall be no more. Do you understand? You cannot have the tree without the root. Tree, tree, tree. A lot of people think that they can just have the wood and you, and you won't have the root of the thing and it don't work like that. Oh, no. no, I want to go on record and say it. It's, it, it's going to be a great reckoning day. Uh -huh. yes, There's no need of you thinking that God is asleep. For the Bible say, I saw the princes yeah. and servants. And I saw that who should have, those who should have been in the service, I saw them up on horses. Yes, sir. In other words, things weren't where they were supposed to be. Oh, but I know somebody. Yes, sir. He, was going, he is going to make every wrong right. Yes, he will. Very soon. The signs and the times are here. Yes, sir. Right now that, that, that Jesus, they are pointing to Jesus' imminent and soon return. The weather is crazy everywhere. I mean, this is the rainiest August I've ever seen. I mean, rainiest July I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. I mean, it rained every, like, every day. It's some rain, my God, which is good. We ain't complaining about that. Yeah. But it's crazy weather happening all over the globe and all over our nation. People having tornadoes that never had tornadoes before. It's hurricanes in places that never had hurricanes. People having freezes where they ain't never froze before. Yeah. 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 Young men are dying in the perfect picture of hell. Wars and rumors of wars. All of that. All this is happening right now because Jesus is on the way back. Yeah. But I want you to know this morning that God does not have to deliver me by my hand or my plan. All right. All right. Say it again. God does not have to deliver me by my hand or my plan. <laughs> Say it again. God does not have to deliver me by my hand or my plan. Because a lot of times we think that we got to have the exact plan and we got to bring it to God as if we God's advisory board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says, who by thinking can figure out God? Yeah. And then he said, who by, what was the scripture talking about? Who have counseled him? No word. Who going to bring him a recommendation how to do what he does? Right, right, right. You know, a lot of people, you know, they think they get real smart, Pastor. Uh -huh. and, and they think that they have God figured out. And that's the furthest thing of the truth. Because if you know anything about God and as you learn it about God, uh -huh. you'll find that the more that you know about him, the less <laughs> you know about him. Sure Why? Because his mind is so great. Yeah. I mean, his mind is so powerful. It's so creative. Yes, it is. You know, he made all of this that we see and don't see. Uh -huh. In six days, and then he sat down. The Bible said he rested. Yes, yeah. he, did. he did what he did, and he rested. Yes. He rested. Yeah, he rested. Like, okay, I, I better sit down for a little while. Take me time to sit down here and look at what all I did. He looked at everything that he made, and he said that it was good. Yes, sir. And can I say this this morning? Yeah. The answer is in you. All right. All right. Yeah. Say it again. The answer. Is in you. Uh -huh. well, how do you know that, Pastor? If God is on the inside of you, you say that He all has right. answered all things. The answer is already inside of you. Thank you, 
you're looking for other ways and other means and other techniques and, and modes and modalities and, 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 and somewhere else to do what only God can do for you. Yes, sir. And trust and believe there are some things that only God can do for us. Counseling not going to get it. Therapy not going to get it. Help me, Lord God, while I talk. There are some things that only God can do for us. Look at 1 Samuel 14 and 6. 1 Samuel 14 6 says, And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, or carried his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison. The garrison, all the garrison is, is a fort or a place that they kept weapons, all right, to give you a picture in your mind. He said, Let's go into the garrison of these uncircumcised. Anytime you see uncircumcised, it means those who have no part of the plan of God, the enemies of God, all right? He say, It may be that the Lord will work for us. Yeah. I like Jonathan's faith. He said, it may be that the Lord is going to work for us. <laughs> now, to give you some background on this story here, all the nation Israel, they all sitting around including King Saul. Yeah. And they, 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 they don't make a move. They just sitting there. They just sitting and waiting. But it may be that the Lord worked for us, but there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Thank you, Lord. In other words, God can save you with a group or he can save you with just him. Or he can save you by one person. Or like Pastor, Pastor said the other night, he can save you by doing nothing. Because yes. <laughs> you got to understand, God's nothing is more powerful than your everything. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Say it again. God's nothing is more powerful than your everything. Yes, sir. I mean, God told the world to spin, a turn, or whatever you want to call it, whatever you believe. One time. He ain't got to wake up every day and crank up the plant. All right. He ain't got to wake up every day and put some cold in for the sun to come up and for it to, you know, do what it do. It, it, it don't work like that. He spoke it into his head and it happened and he gave himself, submitted himself for evidence. Say, come and let us go so there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many oh or God. by a few. In other words, God don't need a bunch of people to deliver you. Come on, and, bro, Pastor, I want to encourage you tonight, Sister Pastor. I want to encourage you this morning. Excuse me, it ain't nighttime. It's fully daytime. But, you know, I got confused on that. But that's all right. You know what time right. it is, where you are. But the thing is, don't be discouraged by what's in front of you, number one. All right. As Elijah, God will feed you with a widow woman mm. who just got ravens coming by the house and finding you in a brook, hid off, ducked off somewhere. Bringing you bread every day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, 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 you don't tie God's hands. Yeah, and think that you have to have certain people for God to do certain things. Come on, right. That may be the problem. It may be. Could be the problem. If you got the wrong people around you, I'm reminded of the miracle. When they asked Jesus to come and heal that little girl, Jesus shows up and they, they start laughing. Uh -huh. Say, so she dead. Now, who laughs because a child is dead? I mean, what's that? that? I mean, that's, that's weird in and of itself. Yeah. You know, that you, because, you know, Jesus, you know, like, I can heal and everybody start laughing. Like, y'all fools. He, so, what does he do? He puts them out. Yes, I'm saying again, he puts them out. Put them out. But see, no, we want everybody to see our miracle. We want everybody to see when God brings us out. Baby, there is some deliverance that God want to do for you just in a one-on-one. -on -one. Can I say it like that? There? there is something that God wants to show you and do for you in the privacy of your prayer closet. What's a prayer closet? Wherever that secret place is that you pray for God to God. It ain't necessarily a physical closet. It could be in your car. It could be a corner in the house. It don't matter. Wherever that place, there's some things that God wants to show you and only you. But God can't show you some stuff with everybody. Around you. All right. Every time the Bible talks about God and Moses, Moses is always up in the mountain by himself. All right. Now they could have, people could have been there, but they didn't want to be there because they say it scared us. Right. And that, that's too much about You know, you hear from him for us and, and we'll be down there waiting. You just bring us and tell us what the Lord said, but we good because that was scared. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, you know, I, you know I, I guess I get what Israel is saying, you know, because you, I mean, anytime the power of God is so great and it's so gentle at the same time. Yeah. Because yeah. the Bible says, you know, he, the lightning came, the mountains trembled and all that, then God came with a soft, meek voice. What? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. All this the answer and here you come. Hey, how y'all doing? What? <laughs> you know, you think you'll come with this big booming voice? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, they see all this terrible smoke and fire coming out of clouds and stuff, you know what I'm saying? They like, nah, wait a minute, nah, we yeah, most you go up there. And we gonna stay down here. Yeah. But what God calls you to do and to be. Many times he'll give a substitute in your place to keep you from tragedy. All right. What, 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 what you mean, Pastor? See, that, that messes with a lot of people's theology. Yeah. But it happens all the time in the earth. Yeah. You ain't never been in a situation where they tell you, look, man, this ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. You young, you, 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 you know, you still got a future ahead of you. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Go home. We got yeah. this. <laughs> see, that's what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. See, see, there's a lot of things happening in the earth and we don't know where it comes from. Yeah. And there ain't no indictment against God. Why? Because God knows what he's doing. And like I say, you know, God don't mind us having bumps and bruises if, if that would have took to snatch us out yeah. of a situation. I mean, you know, our own dear sweet mothers, when we were born, many of us scraped the birth canal and it ain't mama's fault, and we got the scars that last our lifetime, and we call it what? Birthmark. All right. Yeah, birthmark. All right. It wasn't mama's fault. It was just a price that we paid with our bodies to come into the planet, my God. All right, now. <laughs> That's good. Man. Come on. That you come here scratching and scraping, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To live and exist and survive. He said, and God can use the plan he gives me or he can use his own plan. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Say it again. God can use the plan he gives me or he can use his own plan. Jeremiah 29 and 11, your favorite scripture, Pastor. I know. Say it. The right. thoughts that I think thoughts of, to bring you to a place of peace and hoping to bring you to and expect it in. Yeah. But his thoughts and his plans ain't always straight up and down. Oh, God. It'll always travel. North and South. You know, when we coach, Pastor, we teach that the game is played North and South. We're going backwards and forwards. And yeah. you're supposed to be advancing the ball. And if you're going East and West, which is side to side, something is wrong. But ain't necessarily a life tip with God, though. Because to get where God wants you to be, sometimes you may have to take a step back. Oh, the Bible says, abase yourself to be exalted. He will lift you up in due time. You got due time. Yeah. You, you know about a due time, you know, you know, one of the things, this, this, this is my personal thing, okay, this, this ain't in no Bible or nothing like this, but the, 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 the way that the world is now, we don't touch a lot of things. Uh-huh. You got to say it again, we don't touch a lot, like we don't touch music anymore. You know, we used to buy records, buy tapes, buy CDs, you understand, A tracks. Wow. You know, those type of things. No music is just transferred through the app now. Yeah. For the most part, you understand? You still can buy those things. You understand? But I'm talking about buying large. You understand? Yeah, right. You know, you know we, we, we don't touch that anymore. We don't really, you know, necessarily always touch art. You know, we see pictures on the phone. We don't we yeah. don't touch the pictures anymore. You know, we just have to take the picture, wow. take the camera out. I mean, take the camera, take the pop the camera over and take the film out. I know I'm telling my age this morning they had to take the film to get developed. Yeah. And then you touch the picture, but we don't touch the picture no more. It's just automatically on the screen when you take yeah. the picture because we live in a digitized age. And, and it appears that the more we don't, we don't really always touch books anymore because we can get books right there on the device. You know what I'm saying? We can just have all the books in the whole wide world right here on one little device. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is a convenient thing, but we don't really touch it anymore. But nothing will replace God's touch in your life. All right. <laughs> Nothing, 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 nothing will replace his hand being operative in your life. You may think that you're too big and you don't need God's hand, but baby, you get to a place where your money and your guard and neighborhood ain't enough. Yeah, happens. Okay. Where your stocks and your bonds and your CDs and your 401k ain't enough to bring you what you need. Because what you need, you can't buy with money. God that will deliver us by using substitutes in our place, and then God can also use a diversion. 
Sometimes somebody can be having a hard time. And somebody's giving them a hard time. Yeah. And God sends that person that's your enemy. He sends them a distraction. That was God diverting your enemy. Yeah. Say, it, say it again. That was God diverting your enemy. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't just mess with God's children free of charge. No. I'm on record saying that. You can't just mess with, with God's children free of charge because God, again, he can use the plan he gives you or he can use his plan. First Samuel 14, verses 15 and 16, and that was a trembling in the hope. This is after David, I'm sorry, after Jonathan and his armor bearer, they climbed up. Now, the place where they were climb up, climbing up was really dangerous for them to get to because it was a sharp rock, which means yeah. that was impeding death if they didn't climb and scale this, this mountain right to get where they're going. But Jonathan, he said, now look now, we're going to go up here. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to we're gonna go up here and say, now if they tell us, you know, come over here, we want to show you something. We know that the Lord is with us and we're going to have some help and we're going to have victory. But if they say this other thing, we're just going to stay here in the hole where we are because they can't come down to us. Right. Yeah. In other words, they understood that they could be protected whether they went up or they stayed where they were. Yeah, okay, let yeah. me say that for you. You need to know whether you move forward or whether you stay where you are. If you're waiting on God, you're going to be safe either way. All right. All right. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Because, you know, you know sometimes we, we do feel like we're stuck. I say yeah. feel like yeah. we're stuck. And it's a, it's a strange place to be in. But you could be growing and not even knowing. They say like when you start to lift weights, Pastor, they say that right. you start to see it at about four weeks, you start to see the difference. Okay. And they say about six weeks, six to eight weeks, everybody else will start seeing the difference. Uh -huh. okay. But I have also learned that all mirrors are not created equal. <laughs> you look at yourself in one mirror, you look real good in that mirror. Yeah. And you look at this other one, you're like, now wait. You know, uh, sometimes you got, well, you, know, you know, some mirror don't show your wrinkle good. I guess it's the quality of the mirror. I don't really know. I haven't quite figured to study that part out, but I just found that interesting. In other words, sometimes we're looking at ourselves the wrong way. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so sometimes we don't see ourselves as we should, and we may never. All right. Oh, Jesus. That's why we have to just pray and ask God, God, to open our eyes oh, Lord. to see and to do what he gives us. To do. It's saying there was a trembling in the host, in the field and among all the people. The yeah. garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled and the earth quaked. So it was a very great trembling. Mm. An earthquake came out of nowhere and shook the enemy's camp up because these two were bold enough to step out on faith. Jonathan and his own brother, they didn't pray for an earthquake. They didn't ask God for an earthquake. They didn't even ask God to move on their behalf. All right. Jonathan just stepped out. I'm going to see what I'm saying. The watchman of Saul and Jeba of Benjamin looked. So they took their telescopes and he looked out on the horizon and behold, the multitude of the crowd melted away. Mm -hmm. And they went on beating down one another. The earthquake happened. Things got shook up, and then they start killing each other. Yes, sir. I might, if you look over in the next, about the next chapter, or so about two chapters over, you're gonna see the story go live. And David, David ain't gonna lie. Uh, we only see in scripture where David killed one man that day. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He, he killed go live. Yeah. And Ormond like, ooh, that guy, he done got ready to go live this on now. Yeah. But when they get back to town, the women saying that David killed his 10,000 and Saul killed 1,000. Yeah. But he just killed one. <laughs> Can I tell you that God will make your reputation be greater than what it was? Yeah. Not, not to take away the significance of killing Goliath, because Goliath, you know, it, it, I mean, you got to understand who Goliath is. And I, I, didn't, I didn't realize this until last night, Pastor. Goliath had to be rich. Yeah, he was. 
Why? Because he got all this brass and, and got all this arm and stuff on metal. You know, you know, you, you know, got to have a little paper in there for it to be as big as it was on him with his big old overgrown self. Yep. Yep. Had to have some money, That's right, pal? Custom made, tailor made, exactly to fit just him and only him. Yep. And here come this little teenager, David. I'll fight him. <laughs> as I said, that the Lord Spirit of God revealed to me. That was his destiny. That was not his assignment. Uh -oh. oh, no. So, so he showed, I fight him. Now, Saul, the biggest one in the whole nation. You the biggest, tallest, handsome man in all the land. And what you doing? Sitting back, kick back under the tree. Everybody's feet. Nobody wanted to fight him. David showed up that morning. I fight him. Uh -huh. I do. Saul trying to give him his armor. And David said, it's too big for me. I can't wear this. Because David wasn't as tall as Saul was, number one. Right. And David said, I ain't never fought with this stuff. I don't know what this is, man. Yeah. But what I'm going to do with this? And can I tell you, stop trying to put other folks' stuff on to do what God gave you to do. Thank you. Oh, Reverend Samson, you're messing with the peoples this morning, uh -oh. Reverend. That, 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 that you want to be like somebody else so bad that you don't realize the gift that God gave you. Bible said God gave gifts to men and women. Yeah. Ain't the same thing. Me and my sister grew up in the same house. Mm. She got her gifts for Christmas and I got mine. All right. Amen. Did, did, you, did you hear what I said? She got her gifts and I got mine. Yeah. Why? Because we didn't want the same thing. All right. Yep. See, you want what you think is the glory, but you don't know about the glory. You want the glory, but you don't know about the glory, the G-O-R-Y. <laughs> there is no sacrifice without bloodshed. Yeah. Every sacrifice comes at a price. Yes, it does. I'll say that again. Every sacrifice comes with a price. And then, like I say, you reach a point where you get to where you pray and ask God to be. And then you start asking your question, why did I pray to get to this point? Say it again. Why did I pray to get to this point where you were just looking at part of the picture? You didn't see the totality of the wholeness of the completion of what was going on in that matter. It's saying the watchman of the field of Saul of give you a look, and behold, a month two minutes away, they went on down beating each other. God doesn't have to use, nor is he required to get me out the way that I think. Genesis 35 and 5 says, And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. What, what, what does that mean? God scared them. All right. <laughs> and put how scared they were of him on Jacob and his sons. See, it always amazes me how my reputation in certain positions I hold is always far greater than what I am to myself or what I perceive of myself. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, people be like, well, y'all heard you this, this, this. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Because, see, the Lord is the one that will make your name great. Yeah. See, God will put the fear on of you yeah. upon others if you left. Yes, sir. Because he don't want you to be afraid, so God gotta help you out. Yeah. I mean, how many times have I heard testimonies of people talking about that somebody they met came at them in a negative way, and that same person left and went and killed somebody. But they say they didn't kill them because they saw some great big man, yeah. scary looking man behind them, that big dude. <laughs> and they left. Yeah. yeah, scared and afraid. Yeah, that's God with you. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna say, anytime you know something bad supposed to happen to you, and you know what I'm talking about, all y'all ain't been up and through say up and through church saved and Holy Ghost, and your your skirt ain't always been sweeping the floor your whole life either. 
You know something supposed to go down. You know something bad supposed to happen. And people all of a sudden just turn around and just leave you alone free of charge. That was God behind you God, and with you, baby. God, God sent his substitute in his place. And just, they just stand behind you like this. <laughs> I mean, and what they going to do with that? I mean, just on sheer size alone, you already know it's going to be a problem. Yeah, that's right. And thank God that he does use substitutes and diversions to deliver. And Deuteronomy 2.25 says, This day will I begin to put the dread of you and the fear of you, of you upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. My God. Yes, sir. God does not give us fear, but he ain't saying he don't give it to nobody else. I'm going to put the fear and the dread upon you upon all nations under the heaven. And who will hear a report of you, who, whoever hears a report of you, and will trouble and will be in anguish because of you. Yeah. And you wonder why when you show up, you make people nervous. Yeah. You wonder why when you show up, people start to tremble and get afraid and start acting funny and shy and start doing stuff like they five-year-old little girls or something. But God has put the fear and the dread of you upon us. So how is it that I allow God to use his substitutes and his diversion? Walk with God. Walk with God. All through the conquest of the promised land, Joseph, I mean, I'm sorry, Moses and Joshua and the people of Israel they knew they were going to have to fight. Yeah. But they followed the two individuals who had a relationship with God and believed that God would work on their behalf. Yes. In other words, they did what they could yeah. and depended on God to do the rest. All right. So again, they depended on God, but they did the part they knew how to do. Because we don't know how God wants to show up and show out in our situation. We don't know what God has in mind. And we don't know what picture God has in store for his people. So I encourage you this morning, child of God, to continue to walk on by faith. Yes, sir. And to let Jesus be your guide. All right. And let the Most High be your guide. And don't fret and don't wonder about how you're coming out. Yeah. Just know that you are coming out. Yes, sir. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And that you're blood bought and that you're blood caught and that God is working all things for your good. And sometimes you have to remind yourself of Psalm 27. Yes, sir. It's a good psalm to read when you're traveling, but it's a good psalm when you're facing challenges of your life that you can't explain. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes, sir. Whom shall I fear? Yes. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, sir. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Yes. No one holds you in cap against me. My heart shall not fear. And no war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. Yes, sir. For one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek out. Right. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Yes, sir. And to inquire in his temple. Yes, sir. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Yes. And the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he will set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Yeah. Therefore will I offer this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Yes, sir. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with this voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Yes, sir. And when you say, seek my face, my heart said unto you, my, my Lord, I will seek you. Hide not your face far from me, put not your servant away in anger. You have been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me. O oh God of my salvation, yes, sir. when father and mother forsake me, then you will take me up. Yes, 
Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Yes, Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies. The false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Yes, sir. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yes, sir. Child of God, let God use substitutes and diversions in your life. Because God is a master tactician and he can get it done better and quicker and faster and more efficient than we can. Yes, sir. Because he can fight in some places that we can't go. Yes, sir. And he can make some decisions that we don't know about. All right. But just know that God is your sword, your shield, and your buckler. And he's fighting on your behalf every day. Yes, and he's looking out for your best interest because I heard him say that all things, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Yes. So if you're wondering how it's going to turn out, just know it's going to turn out just fine. Yes, sir. If you're wondering how it looks, just remember that it's a bright, sunshiny day. If you wonder how it's going to feel, remember that you're going to feel real good in the bottom of your soul. Yes, sir. Because you don't have a problem that God can't fix. Right. And you don't have a trouble that God ain't seen. Yes, and you don't have a malady or disease or sickness that God can't heal. Because in his hands are still healing. Yes, in his hands are still delivering. Yes, in his hands are still pulling power. And he's still saving sin sick souls on today. So don't give up no matter what you may be facing. Don't give, don't give up no matter what you may be looking at. It don't matter if your bills piled up this high and you don't know where the money is coming from. Yes, sir. If you are tired and you know God for yourself, just know that God and help is on the way. Yes, and don't ever forget that no matter where you go on this planet or where you live or live or don't have and have, God is your helper. Whoa. And he will save you with the saving strength of his right hand. Yes, and he's not living it to your plan and your hand because God got a whole nother set of friends yes, that we don't even know about. God got a whole nother set of allies that we might not even meet in this lifetime. God got a whole nother set of people praying for you that you don't even know about. God got a whole nother set of people holding the rope to make sure that you get let down safely where he has for you to be. So fight on, old soldier, and keep moving forward. And don't let no trouble take you out. You take your trouble out. Take your trouble out to God in prayer. And speak to God about everything that you're going through. And leave it at his feet. Don't go and pick it up. Don't go and call it back. Don't go and complain about it. Let God fix it. Because if he fix it, it's going to be fixed. And you're not going to be able to add and take nothing away from it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. God uses substitutes, substitutes. Yeah. and diversions and on our behalf to deliver us to the other side. Yes, sir. I hear the Spirit of God say there is a golden bridge that he has. <laughs> My God. There is a golden bridge that he has. Yes. To get us. Oh God. Where he wants us to be. And he said his bridge does not shake and rattle. Alright. <laughs> it doesn't bulge. It, it doesn't bend. It, it doesn't break. It doesn't get too high. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And by God could preserve nation Israel's shoes for so long. I mean, what type of God are you that you concerned about sandals, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and for 40 years, and you concerned about clothes. Yeah. That, that you keep them together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keeping us together. In spite of where we are. In spite of that deliverance, he kept them, my God. Yes, sir. Together. For his name's sake. See, that's what I'm talking about. That God in his name's sake, he takes it. He says, since I could swear by nothing, I swore by myself. Yes, sir. He said, I couldn't put it on nothing else, so I put that on my name. Yeah. He said, because I know my name and I got to keep my word. I got to honor my word. Yes, sir. 
Say it after me, oh God. Cause me to be paid fairly. For every go live. I'm kidding. Oh God. Cause me to be paid fairly. For every go live. I've killed. See, you killed some gold lies in your life you don't even know about. Yes, sir. Spirit of God say them, 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 them greatest fights in your life. Yeah. They really took you out, you thought. Yeah. 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 They really drained you and broke you down to your lowest particle. Not molecule, your lowest particle. That's because you were fighting a good life. Wow. Yes, Lord. Wow. But you won. And everybody else did too. Woo! My Lord. Woo! My Lord, when you defeat go live. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Basically, what you're doing is kicking in the door for everybody else to be able to come in that's it. That's and defeat the enemy. That's it. And that's basically what it comes down to. Like, as the simplest term, I can break it down to you in. That's plain. David didn't get his just due and what he was promised. Not from Saul. From Saul. <laughs> but, but, but. He's king, made king after Saul dies. He's made king of Judah for seven years. Yeah. They make him king of his, his own tribe. Yes, and they say, you know what? David, it was you that let us out and in and Lord. Yeah. We want you to be king. Yeah. So yeah. what he didn't get under that reign, he got under his reign. Yes, sir. He's supposed to be a tax free man, the king's daughter, and all this other stuff. His, house, his, his, his whole house, his whole lineage would be free from taxes. All that came to him. Yeah. And it wasn't that long. No. It came to him. That, that's one of the reasons why God got married in Bethlehem. He said, Fool, I gave you songs, man. You got plenty. Yeah. So I want you to know this morning. Don't worry about it. Whatever is right, the Lord, the Lord. will repay. Can I tell you this morning the Lord is good for it? Yes, sir. He's good for it. His checks don't bounce. No, they don't. His cars don't get demagnetized. He's good no, for sir. it. No, sir. No, sir. And somebody need to be discouraged and be encouraged in that. Yeah. That God is good for it. Yes, sir. The Lord is not short concerning his promise. Yes, yeah. If you don't know Jesus, Thank you. He's the best person for you to know. Uh, it's good to have good parents. It's good to have a good spouse. It's good to have good children. But yeah. Jesus, the Christ, yeah. is the absolute best friend for you to have. I tell you, I like that song. He's the greatest friend of all. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Because why? He'll stay with you. Yes, sir. See, Jesus Christ already died. He's already where he is. But that's how he can stay with you. Yes, sir. And you need somebody that can consistently be in your life because eternity is real. Yes, it is. They call it quantum reality is what they call it in science. Yeah. But it's, it's eternity. Yeah. The part of you know the time continuum continues on the other side. Everything is just now. It's where your spirit goes when you die. Oh, and you either spend eternity with Jesus Christ or you spend eternity in hell. But it's up to you where you go. If I were you, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and that way I spend eternity with Him in a beautiful place, yeah. streets of paved with gold, and layers of twelve foundations of jewels, and has twelve gates to the city, made of solid pearl. Yeah. And everybody is happy there. You don't have any bad memories. Nobody is depressed there. Nobody is sick there. Nobody is feeble. Nobody has disease. Spend eternity telling God thank you and Amen. learn about Him. So that you say, Yes, I want to accept Jesus into my heart. You need Him. But the Bible says, With the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Maybe you already saved, but you and God then got to a weird place and 
you know, you done got out there and you can't figure out how to come back in, just ask God to forgive you. Yeah. I mean, the Bible makes it clear, come let us reason together. In other words, let's work it out. It don't have to be like this between you and God. And I know our relationship with God can get strained up, it can get thin. We can get back in the right place with God. So if it's you and you say, yes, I want to get back in right standing with God. Yes, I want to be saved. We're going to pray a prayer. For you to receive Jesus Christ in your heart is to offer you to get back in Jesus Christ and you have a relationship all over again. The prayer is very simple. The prayer says, Dear God, I know that I'm Jesus Christ and I'm lost. I thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for me in my sins and getting up, up, getting up again. Jesus Christ, thank you for dying for me and getting up again that I may have the right to eternal life. Jesus Christ, forgive me my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, make me whole. Forgive me, oh God, of my sins. Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. Sit on the throne of my heart and I want to serve you balance of my days. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for saving me. Amen. You also find that prayer is also pinned there on the news feed, on Facebook. If you want to pray that prayer, if you got saved, just type there in the comments, I'm saved. If you want more scripture proof of you receiving salvation and assurance of your salvation or receiving Jesus Christ and Savior, just inbox us and we'll send those scriptures to you. If you got saved this morning, I want to say welcome to the family of God. If you rededicate your life back to God, we want to say welcome home. But Pastor now are praying for you. We believe in God's best for you. As you go, tell the world about Jesus and tell them about his love. Let them know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus prospers. Amen. Say that I 